Hello there and welcome back to Genesis Designs and Model Craft Bench. This is part two of the Gulf War Tornado Foxy Killer build. So uh, you may recall from part one, if you watched it, that I put a hold on certain parts of the work because I was waiting on an undercarriage set. So initially I hadn't planned to change the wheelbase for resin ones, but I changed my mind as I was working on things, which is something I am quite quite I have a tendency to do. So here is the resin is resin undercarriage set and hopefully you can see quite easily see why I decided to use them. Here is the kit part. Here is the airs part. Massive, massive difference. Now I think airs quite deservedly to be honest have a bit of a reputation for being uh, difficult to use or difficult to integrate with kits they don't seem to design their resin sets to be a drop-in fit a lot of the time so I thought I'd spend a few minutes just talking about ways and means with this sort of thing um, <clears throat> the biggest issue with resin parts generally is the pore stub obviously the resin is a liquid it's tipped into a rubber mold and uh, there's usually a bit of excess which forms a pore stub on this main undercarriage bay you can see it here and in this case not only is it easier for them to cast the part this way up but this remnant doesn't need to come off because of where it fits into the kit um, here's the fuselage, uh, you know, the base of the fuselage as you know you can see I've already started to modify it and I'll just quickly talk you through that so first things first uh, tweezers or are you these need to come out easiest way to do that get your nippers nippity nip it's gone oh whoopsie daisy hurt the camera now because of the poor stub these pieces here also get in the way so then you think do I cut this whole poor stub off well no let's just cut these off and not worry about it anymore and that's that done um, <clears throat> obviously you need to then clean up the remnants from the nippers scalpel blade and a bit of sanding and you're done uh, and then that enables this piece to just sit on there quite happily in the same manner in fact that the kit part does this being the kit part. So then further experimentation ensues because you have to make sure that the intake ducting still fits because that's the kit undercarriage base essentially snuggle underneath it like so and then these form the front and rear of the bay. Well <coughs> excuse me straight away with test fitting you can see that what airs have done is integrated these edges so clearly it isn't going to fit in between like the kit part does anymore as you can see here because it's the same length so these were trimmed down in the same way that I've just showed you but I've left the bit in the middle just to, to give a little bit of support when fitted like this to give a bit of support to this flat panel I also left the very top section to give some support to the side panel which is what it's designed to do this being the side panel so those those posts just lock into the side panel there and that gives that a bit of support and this is a very flexible part so that support is warranted and that, that's all <coughs> all very good hunky dory so you fit this into place and then I offer up this is quite awkward to do without glue but offer up this part make sure it fits front and rear yep it touches down now when I initially did this test fit I found that it was just a tad high at the front this 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 cast piece was just holding up the intake by a tiny amount not a lot and I think honestly I might have got away with it but to alleviate the situation what I did was three things I took off 
the very corners here I just trimmed them with the with the scalpel just rounded those off out of the way this piece I can't really show you because the light oh maybe you can just see actually because of where the light is but this is already pretty much wafer thin if you start sanding this down you're going to go through it quite quickly so I just took off those edges to round them off a little bit I also just made sure this bottom area here was flat by <coughs> just putting a sandy stick across it and giving it a little rub just to make sure nothing was lifting it away from this plate secondly um, and it took a few minutes I trimmed some thickness from this panel so here on this side you can see that there's a slot where the undercar undercarriage bay fits into so this part here is higher than that part there and what I've done essentially is thinned this entire area until it's all at the same level as you can see there. That scarring there is from where I just sliced it out a bit too much and I've, I've just filled that back in to make it smooth. So once it's all, I used, I used this curved blade and literally just carved it away then smoothed it out with a sanding stick so that's removed a little bit of thickness basically just in this area to stop it from potentially holding the back edge of this up and lastly on the base of the on the underside of this intake trunking I think you can probably see there I've taken a little bit of material again trimmed it away with this curved blade from the front and rear parts adjacent to these cross members there is a very very slight curve in the part almost quite difficult to see from looking at it like this so that the front and rear edges of the undercarriage bay were touching but the middle wasn't so by trimming it back just a little bit it's enabled this part now fits quite snugly for the full length so it's just giving it that a tiny tiny bit of clearance you're probably talking about in total maybe maybe not not even a millimeter of thickness here probably half to three quarters of a millimetre of thickness in total but it's just enough that this whole assembly now fits snugly without rocking so that being said once I was happy with that because these uh, forward, forward and aft faces of the undercarriage bay are now integrated the last thing just to be sure and check is that the side panel of the fuselage and this world's most bitty kit would still fit at least as well as it used to so that's all held together now you see how snug all of that is there really isn't any excess space just like the real thing um, <clears throat> take the side panel which has the mounting point on it for the main undercarriage leg just slot that into position here. and I don't really have enough fingers to do this all at once but hopefully you can see that all works as advertised of course it's not brilliant because I'm just holding it roughly in place but it all fits without any real issues and looks super nice so that's how I went about fitting that in total that work took around 30 to 40 minutes uh, and I wasn't rushing so that's how to deal with that piece um, the nose bay though which is delightfully detailed compared to the original uh, is a different story because this poor stub is going to have to go we already know from talking and looking at pieces earlier that it has to slot into the into the cockpit tub assembly along that along that line so the pour stub has to go there are a few ways of removing pour stubs you can sand them off good luck if you want to do that it is going to take a while you can use a, a rotary tool or a dremel if you like with some kind of sanding barrel on it or a cutting wheel um, a lot quicker but it is going to make a lot of mess um, make sure you're wearing a mask or some sort of lung protection and, and eye protection indeed if you're going to do that because you're going to make a mess you can trim them off uh, some pore stubs are quite easy to trim away and that 
can be the most efficient manner of doing it and this one this aft piece i am going to use my nippers again and just snip it off that's that gone but this one i'm going to use a saw a razor saw to be precise now there's a couple of types of razor saw um this one my jlc razor saw uses a saw blade that's much like a razor blade hence the name this can be exceptionally useful for taking resin parts away from their pores because it's very very fine and cut an incredibly thin line it's quite accurate and it's nice to use but for this kind of thing it's not ideal because it can only saw to a certain depth and then and then you're stuck so what i will use instead is this this is a tamiya saw it's an alpha blade as you can see but that's like a miniature wood saw blade it's got cross uh, cross cut teeth which will clear material so it, d it doesn't have the tendency to get stuck that razor saws have so that's what i'm going to use so i'm just going to quickly excuse me demonstrate so first off i'm going to make a cut across the part where that change in level is very important when you're doing things like this to constantly check where you're at to make sure you're not cutting into the part and causing yourself extra work there we go we've cut a slot in there and then I mean which way you do it it's everyone has a preference I'm going to go from the end because it would be difficult to saw like that Get it started so try and work quite close to what you want the end result to be but not so close that you're likely to make a mistake everybody knows knows their limits things like this if you're confident in your tools and yourself you can you can make a cut that will pretty much be the finished cut right from the off removed satis now to finish that off there is a still a, a thin small amount of that left you're literally going to come into that with your knife and just trim the remainder of that away quickly safely so gone there's no danger here of wrecking the part and there's no danger to your lungs because you're trimming it off in huge pieces like so Not absolutely finished no but that, that's how we're going to deal with it bear in mind also that this is going to form the bottom of the cockpit tub so it does need to be done right of a nervous disposition with cuts like this you can always come from each side to minimize the chance of things going awry these saws are quite happy to cut gentle curves so it's perfectly possible to veer off and go straight through your, your new resin part you know this cockpit set was uh, 16.99 from Hannant's so it's not an inconsiderable amount of money in comparison to the cost of the kit get this revel tornado for quite happily for 20 quid these days and there we go <sighs> poor stub removed and then with a bit of cleanup that will fit already is doing to be honest into position under there now obviously some 
some modification is going to be required here because the um, the resin cockpit tub isn't designed to work as you can see there's a gap look with the resin wheelbase so what I shall do I'll clean all of this up this will be the front part of the cockpit floor and I'll use a piece of thin plastic card in this area here but there there it is that's that that's how easy that can be this say Tamiya Tamiya razor saw not not expensive it uh, uses a system similar to the x -Lite. I mean you could put that blade in an x -Lite handle if you wanted to actually but absolutely perfect for doing this sort of work um, I'll just move this rubbish into the bin Another thing that's been sent to me that's arrived this morning from um, Tim Perry is some new radome pieces. Um, now these are 3D printed and Tim is um, a tornado fanatic. Um, he is currently working on a conversion for the 132nd Italery kit I believe to, to make an F3. Um, finding it there we go flying start models I'll put a link in the description but here we go three 3d printed tornado radomes now he sent me one of each there's a GR1 and an F3 radome you can see the difference there uh, and in comparison to the kit piece for a start it doesn't have a sink mark around it but it's a much 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 more subtle shape and I will be using this absolutely it looks it looks fabulous um, as I say, 3D printed with this wonderfully <laughs> intricate framework holding it in place down there. But yeah, very, very big thanks to Tim Perry for those. Uh, and I'll show you some more of that on the build as, uh, as we progress. But for now, I'm going to get on with sawing and hacking and standing at resin parts. And, uh, and I'll catch up with you soon. And you join me again sometime later, as you can see. Some Tamiya tape has been sacrificed to the modelling gods to make sure all of this will fit together. Uh, after I've been mucking about with the nose wheel bay in the cockpit for quite some time. So, as you can see now, we do have a resin cockpit. It does fit. Stuff does join together. The bottom's all good. Complete with beautiful detailed nose bay. So if I... Oh, and the 3D printed uh, radar, don't forget that. So let's get this tape off and I'll show you what I've done. This will be subject to a little, a little more just finessing really once uh, once I've got a few more things sort of cemented in and finalised you get to a point with dry fitting where you've kind of done as much as you can and you have to just commit to glue there is very much um, <coughs> there really is a danger of overthinking all of this sometimes and I'm not going to lie I'm a bit of a professional overthinking things so ok here we go and this is what we're left with. This this is a cockpit tub. It's glued in. It's in place. You can see I've got the new plastic card floor in there, uh, sitting on top of the nose wheel bay, which is also glued into place, as you can see. Um, <clears throat> this section here. This is a wadge of plasticine which I've put in there because the original cockpit tub has this foot on it, which glues into a track in the fuselage floor which is handy because it, it, it makes it easy to align the cockpit tub because of the unique way this model is put together um, it's quite easy to fit this tub on the slosh so that nothing will go together afterwards um, anyway the reason I put plasticine in that gap is just to provide a little bit of support in this sense because this this part's quite flexible um, and the only gluing surface here is basically this. So 
gives a little bit of support to the tub and it makes it less likely that it's going to fall down and disappear into the fuselage at a later date um, and I think once once we've got things glued in and a, a little bit more settled around the nose I'll probably pack a little more plasticine in the back there uh, and it'll all form part of the nose weight anyway right so what I had to do the cockpit tub itself absolutely nothing honestly it uh, the, the, this is the poor stub that's still there uh, obviously there's haven't designed this wheelbase set with a view to working with the cockpit set that is a bit of an omission on their part in my opinion but on the other hand you have to design your parts to fit the kit um, if, you, if they designed it to fit the resin wheelbase then people would complain that weren't buying the wheelbase so there's no way around it really um, so that caused a little extra work but you know it's no biggie it's gone in absolutely fine in terms of modifications though I have had to change change up these nose pieces a fair bit um, I there was a, a crossbar here that's been completely removed you can see the remnants of it inside just here there was a little shelf where the side consoles would have butted up to originally that's been trimmed away too a uh, small notch at the back here and of course the in main in uh, forward instrument panel combing has been completely removed because the resin set has a new one now without doing those things these nose panels wouldn't fit at all they just wouldn't close over this as it is the right hand side in particular is a little tight you see I can't get the no, what will you do it? But it, it, this side will need a little more fettling to get this nice. I don't want it to be off square, you see. But I've got to the point now where I need to start to paint things so that I can finalise things, uh, and then I can do final trimming. So this, this is a new resin part which slips on here, forming essentially the side wall of the cockpit, like so basically I need to paint all this stuff so that I can glue this into position and once it's all fixed I can trim the outside down and get you to focus there you go there's a little bit of excess sort of here I'll get rid of that and thin this a little bit more in a few places and I reckon I can get this all to just slip into place without any undue squeezing or pressure being required and obviously I can also thin this a little bit and it's going to be in sort of this area that it has to be done so as I say I've got to the point where I need to start putting paint onto things so that I can do that uh, get the fit finalized but it's quite encouraging honestly the nose goes on okay I did do a full a full dry fit such as it's possible to do it with all the other panels but again it, it get it's so bitty in its construction that it's really really very difficult to to get everything with tape anyway to, to be able to get gain any meaningful conclusions from it the radon fits nicely though uh, which is good and when I took it off you can see in here it says R48 GR what is actually printed on the inside which is nice and it does also include the location, the location look as the kit one did. So that that's that's really nice, and I re I can recommend that. Excuse me. So the intake trunking ended up looking like this. As you can see, I've clearanced these inner edges a little bit as well. I found that one of the wheel bays, or the second one that I fitted, just just wanted to interfere with the intakes a little bit on this inner edge. Um, so they've been trimmed down I can do that because there's stuff in the back there which gives me enough thickness of resin to do it but again I'm at the point where I need to paint these and get them fitted to finalize all the fitment of it um, and I can see having messed with these and sanded I don't know if you can see that these are clearly based on the kit parts originally which is um, something I think I said earlier that as have a a deserved reputation, in, well in my opinion it's deserved, 
for being a bit tricksy sometimes to fit. Um, I've certainly had my fair share of issues with them in the past, but so far all of these parts are fitted with quite minimal invasive surgery really in comparison and I believe that that is in no small part because they are clearly based on the kit parts so you know the basics are there for them to fit properly um, very substantially reworked kit parts clearly but kit parts nonetheless well as promised the cockpit has been painted and I've fitted the side panels now if I just come up closer hopefully can get a focus on there. I've glued these side panels into position and then and then sanded them down uh, nice and smooth everything fared in so that both halves of the nose fit easily um, as we'll just demonstrate with extra clumsy fingers That's one side There's the other, and they now join together at the back without any undue effort. They already did at the front, so there we go. Looking inside, you can see that there's just a small amount of clearance both sides. So these resin sidewalls are now not interfering with these fuselage parts, which they were certainly, particularly this side. Uh, around about where the bottom where the side console sits was, was touching inside and making it difficult to bring that joint together not necessarily a problem in itself but with this kit having this extraordinary parts breakdown for the rest of the fuselage any sort of fit issues anywhere can quite easily lead to bigger fit issues elsewhere so you have to be careful of that kind of thing uh, which is why I went to that extra effort just to make sure these would fit with minimal effort and I'm sorry about the creaking but <laughs> um, that, that's why I did that I've also to, to enable that part of the problem also there was this angled section here was just touching the back of the resin tub again that's thicker than the original plastic part there so that kind of thing that's that's what happens when you when you're dealing with resin parts uh, as for the interior I'll take some photos for the Facebook page because I'm not sure if this will really come out to any meaningful degree but I've painted all the side consoles um, with due reference to references excuse the pun um, so it's very popular with jet models and modelers to go around painting all the buttons in a, in a glorious technical technical array uh, it's completely not representative of the real thing though they they, they aren't coated in multicolour buttons guys um, just use my Duke Hawkins book you've got red guarded switches you've got metal toggle switches you've got light grey buttons you've got black buttons uh, and that's basically a lot the odd green bit here and there but not on the parts I've just done um, the flooring here you can see I've painted it green I've used uh, NATO green XF67 Samir for that on the later aircraft that is in fact black it's like a rubber mat that's that's put in there protecting the floor uh, I have a photograph supplied by my tornado friend of a GR1 in the camouflage uh, and it has a green floor mat and that's why I've gone with green uh, just as a side note I did actually use some of the kit decals to do this side console stuff uh, the, the the babe the desert babe kit comes with um, this lovely set of decals for the for the interior for the cockpit so you've got instrument panels and side consoles even um, <coughs> even the combing details represented on this decal sheet and you can see I've taken a few out um, so that's great news if anybody's building the kit and using the kit tub adding these these decals to it will make for a really nice looking job uh, and it's much easier than trying to paint things you can see there's some really small stuff there and I think more of this will get used yet honestly uh, in combination with sorting out the fit of the cockpit tub I also did more work on the main wheel bays um, 
a bit more sanded off this is the right hand no this is the left hand one a bit more sanded off the top of that and in fact the oh, whoopsie the intake trunking had a bit more material removed as well so I do now have a nice easy fit on those um, the whole lot goes together again without unnecessary or undue squeezing I have also painted these wheelbase uh, as well they're white uh, gloss white as per the real thing and I've been treated so far to a very thin wash which was made from oil brusher dark brown and enamel thinners I mixed it up really really thin and used quite a fine brush just to um, pop it in to all the recesses and the details and I used the same wash to just bring out all the different panels on the side consoles in the cockpit likewise in the nose wheel bay the same work has been carried out so there is yet more detailed paint work to do in the wheel bays but we are now in a good position to be able to start actually assembling some of these fuselage parts together that, that's it now for part two um, I'll look forward to seeing you again in part three with some more progress on this Edward edition of the Revel 148 Tornado GL1. So until then, look after yourselves, look after each other, and Genesis out.